So, let me get this straight, Captain Sarah Giggles, Martina said, leaning back in her chair and propping her boots up on the conference table. You're telling me that we, the supposedly primitive apes from a death world, just saved your collective asses from an invasion of space-faring jellyfish. The Gowian ambassador, Yulna, flicked her ears in what Sarah had learned was their equivalent of an eye roll. That's a gross oversimplification, Captain, but essentially correct. Her Sarah barked, slapping her thigh. And here I thought today was going to be boring. All right, furball, spill the beans. What exactly happened? Yulna's whiskers twitched in annoyance at the nickname, but she'd long since given up trying to correct the irreverent human. The Dominion outpost on Garavinda 7 was attacked by a previously unknown species. They appeared without warning, using some form of teleportation technology we've never encountered before. Teleportation Sarah's eyebrows shot up. Well, shit. That's a game-changer. Indeed, Yulna continued her tone grave. These beings, which some are calling quantum squids due to their appearance, and apparent mastery of quantum mechanics overwhelmed the outpost's defences in minutes. They seemed intent on capturing specimens from every species present. Sarah's feet hit the floor with a thud as she leaned forward, all traces of humour gone from her face. Specimens? You mean slaves? Yulna nodded solemnly. We believe so. Their tactics were disturbingly similar to those of the hunters. Fuck me sideways, Sarah muttered, running a hand through her short cropped hair. All right, so where do we come in? The Gallian's ears perked up slightly. Well, that's where things get interesting. You see, they made the mistake of trying to capture a human tourist. Sarah's grin returned, wider than ever. Oh, this I've got to hear. What poor bastard did they try to snatch? A wrestler from Earth named... Let me see if I'm pronouncing this correctly. Dwayne the Rock Johnson. For a moment... There was dead silence in the conference room. Then Sarah burst into peals of laughter so loud that Yulna's sensitive ears flattened against her skull. Oh! Oh my God, Sarah wheezed between guffaws. They tried to abduct the rock. Holy shit, that's priceless. Yulna waited patiently for the human to compose herself, though her whiskers twitched with poorly concealed amusement. I take it this individual is somewhat formidable. Formidable Sarah wiped tears from her eyes. Honey, that's like calling a supernova somewhat warm the rock is. Well, he's a legend. Built like a brick shithouse and twice as tough. What the hell happened? Yulna's ears swiveled forward. A sign of excitement. According to eyewitness accounts, when the quantum squids attempted to restrain him, he... How did the report put it? Ah, yes, he laid the smack down on their candy asses. Sarah lost it again howling with laughter and pounding the table. Oh, God, stop, you're killing me. Please tell me there's video. There is Yulna confirmed, her own amusement evident now. Apparently, Mr. Johnson's personal drone captured the entire incident. It's become quite popular on your human internet. I bet it as Sarah chuckled, shaking her head. All right, so the rock beats up some space squids. How did that save the outpost? Yulna's expression grew more serious. It seems the quantum squids were unprepared for the level of resistance they encountered. Mr. Johnson's actions not only freed himself but also several other captives. In the ensuing chaos he rallied the outpost's security forces and led a counterattack. Sarah whistled low. Damn. From wrestler to action hero. Not bad for a day's work. Indeed, Yulna agreed. But that's not all. Once word of the attack reached Earth, your planet's response was, well, unprecedented. Oh, Sarah leaned forward, intrigued. How so? Yulna's ears flattened slightly, a sign of discomfort. Within hours of the distress call, Earth launched what you call a carrier strike group through the jump array, led by something called a Nimitz-class supercarrier. Sarah's eyes widened. Holy shit! You're telling me we sent a full CSG? That's... wow! Talk about overkill. Perhaps Yulna conceded. But it was undeniably effective. The sight of your massive ships appearing in orbit, launching swarms of fighter craft. Well, let's just say the quantum squids decided discretion was the better part of valor. They ran with their tentacles between their legs. How Sarah smirked. Essentially, yes, Yulna nodded. But not before your forces managed to disable and capture one of their ships. The scientific data alone is invaluable. 
to say nothing of the diplomatic implications. Sarah leaned back, a thoughtful expression on her face. So, let me see if I've got this straight. Some overconfident calamari decided to go slaving, picked the wrong tourist to fuck with, got their asses handed to them by the rock, and then got scared off by the U.S. Navy. That is. A colourful but accurate summary, yes, Yolna agreed. Sarah threw her head back and laughed. Oh, man, that's beautiful. I can just imagine the looks on their faces, do they even have faces? When they realised they'd kicked the wrong anthill. Yolna's whiskers twitched in amusement. It was certainly a rude awakening for them. But, Captain, surely you understand the gravity of the situation. This represents a significant shift in the galactic balance of power. Sarah waved a hand dismissively. Oh, I get it. Trust me. But come on, you've got to admit it's a little funny. These advanced aliens probably thought they were hot shit. And they get taken down by a bunch of primitive death welders. I Suppose there is a certain irony to it, Yulner admitted reluctantly. Damn straight there is, Sarah grinned. So, what happens now? I'm guessing the Dominion isn't too happy about Earth flexing its muscles like that. Yulner's ears flattened again. That is an understatement. There's been a great deal of concern expressed about humanity's rapid technological advancement and willingness to project military power beyond your own system. Sarah's expression hardened. Hey, we didn't start this fight. We just finished it. If the Dominion's got a problem with us defending ourselves and our allies, they can kiss my shiny human ass. Eloquent as always, Captain Yulna sighed. But the fact remains this incident has raised a number of difficult questions. Many in the Dominion are wondering if it was wise to allow humans access to interstellar technology in the first place. Oh, for fuck's sake, Sarah groaned, rolling her eyes. Here we go again with the humans are too dangerous bullshit. Need I remind you that we just saved a bunch of Dominion citizens from being turned into calamari chow? Yolna held up a placating paw. I'm well aware, Captain. And believe me, there are many of us myself included who are grateful for humanity's intervention. But you must understand, your species represents a significant disruption to the established order. Sarah snorted. Yeah, well, maybe the established order needed a good kick in the pants. From where I'm sitting... It seems like the galaxy's been coasting along for millennia, letting assholes like the Hunters and these new quantum squids run around unchecked. You're not entirely wrong, Yulna admitted. But change on this scale is... Frightening for many. Humanity has accomplished in decades what takes most species centuries, if not millennia. Boo fucking who Sarah retorted, though there was a hint of a smile on her face. Look, I get it. We're the new kids on the block and we're shaking things up. But has it occurred to anyone that maybe, just maybe, that's not such a bad thing? Yolna cocked her head to the side, curious. How do you mean? Sarah leaned forward, her eyes intense. Think about it. You said yourself that these quantum squids had tech you'd never seen before. They caught you with your pants down, ear fur, unbrushed, whatever. But to us, we adapted, we improvised, we overcame. That is. A fair point Yolna conceded. Damn right it is, Sarah nodded. Humanity's whole history is one long string of adapting to shit trying to kill us. Our planet? Trying to kill us. Our own bodies? Trying to kill us, each other. Definitely trying to kill us. We've spent millennia perfecting the art of not dying. Yulna's ears perked up with interest. I hadn't considered it from that perspective before. Sarah was on a roll now, gesticulating as she spoke. Of course you haven't. You come from a nice, safe world where the worst thing you have to worry about is maybe stubbing your toe on a rock. We come from a planet where everything from the air to the water to the cute, fuzzy animals is potentially lethal. I See, Yulna said slowly. And you believe this has better prepared you for the dangers of the galaxy? abso fucking lutely Sarah grinned. We're the universe's ultimate survivors. You think some overdeveloped calamari are scary? Please. We've got toddlers on Earth that could give them a run for their money. Yulna's whiskers twitched in what Sarah had learned was their version of a suppressed laugh. I'm not sure I'd go that far, Captain. No. Let me paint you a picture, Sarah, leaned back, a mischievous glint in her eye. Imagine you're one of these quantum squids. You've just teleported into what you think is going to be an easy score. Maybe you've done this a hundred times before on softer worlds. You're feeling pretty good about yourself. Yulna nodded, clearly intrigued, despite herself. Now imagine. Imagine. 
Sarah continued, her grin widening, that instead of some soft, compliant alien, you come face to face with a roided-up pro-wrestler built like a Greek god. And not just any wrestler, but The Rock himself, a man who spent his entire career pretending to beat the ever-loving shit out of people for entertainment. I see, Yulna said, though her expression suggested she didn't. Not really. Oh, it gets better, Sarah chuckled. Because while you're trying to process this mountain of muscle and charisma, he's already grabbed the nearest heavy object, probably a chair, knowing wrestling and is proceeding to introduce it to your face at high velocity while spouting one-liners. Yulna winced. That does sound... Unpleasant. Unpleasant? It's a fucking nightmare for them, Sarah laughed. And that's just one human. Imagine an entire planet full of us, all raised on action movies and video games, suddenly given access to spaceships and energy weapons. We're like kids in a candy store, except the candy is ways to creatively kick ass. Yorna's ears flattened slightly. You're not exactly alleviating the Dominion's concerns about human aggression, Captain. Sarah waved a hand dismissively. Oh, please. We're not aggressive, we're proactive. There's a difference. I'm not sure the Dominion Council would agree, Yolna said dryly. Yeah, well, the Dominion Council can kiss my Sarah started, but was cut off by a sharp beat from her comm unit. She glanced at it and grinned. Well, would you look at that? Speak of the devil. What is it, Yolna asked, leaning forward. Sarah's grin widened as she read the message. Looks like our boy Dwayne is capitalizing on his newfound interstellar fame. He's just announced a new movie deal, The Rock Vs. The Quantum Realm. Yolna's ears perked up in surprise. A. Movie. About the attack. Oh, honey, Sarah chuckled. You ain't seen nothing yet. This is going to be a blockbuster. Action. Comedy. Sci-fi. It's got it all. The Rock playing himself, saving the galaxy with nothing but his biceps and his eyebrow game. I. Don't understand, Yolna said, clearly bewildered. This was a serious incident. People could have died. How can you make light of it? Sarah's expression softened slightly. That's just it, Yolna. We're not making light of it, we're processing it. This is how humans deal with trauma and fear. We laugh at it. We turn it into entertainment. We take the thing that scares us and we make it ours. Yolna cocked her head to the side, considering. That's a unique approach. Damn straight it is, Sarah nodded. And it works. By the time this movie comes out, every human kid is going to be playing humans vs. Quantum squids in their backyard. We're taking the fear and turning it into fun. I suppose I can see the value in that, Yolna admitted. But surely there are more. Diplomatic ways to handle this situation. Sarah snorted. Diplomacy? Please. We tried that already. Remember the hunters? The San Diego attack. Fat lot of good diplomacy did us then. Yolna's ears flattened. That was. Different. The hunters are. The hunters are just the tip of the iceberg, Sarah interrupted. Face it, Yolna. The galaxy's a mess, and playing nice clearly isn't cutting it anymore. Sometimes you need to crack a few eggs to make an omelette. And humanity is the one wielding the spatula, Yolna asked dryly. Sarah grinned. Now you're getting it. Look, I know we're not perfect. Hell, we're probably the galaxy's biggest train wreck in a lot of ways. But you know what? We get shit done. That's one way of putting it, Yulna conceded. It's the only way that matters, Sarah retorted. While the Dominion's been sitting on its collective ass, twiddling its thumbs and hoping problems like the hunters will just go away, we've been out there actually doing something about it. Yulna's whiskers twitched in what Sarah had learned was a sign of irritation. The Dominion has protocols, procedures... The Dominion has its head so far up its own ass it can see daylight, Sarah interrupted. No offence. Offence very much taking Yolna grumbled. Sarah softened slightly. Look, I get it. We're the new kids on the block and we're shaking things up. Change is scary. But you've got to admit, the old way of doing things wasn't exactly working out great for anyone except the bad guys. Yolna was quiet for a moment, considering. You may have a point, she admitted reluctantly. Damn straight I do, Sarah nodded. And here's the thing we're not looking to take over or dominate anyone. We just want to survive and maybe make things a little better along the way. Is that really so terrible? When you put it that way. No, I suppose not, Yulna said slowly. But the methods. The methods work, Sarah interrupted. Results speak for themselves. The quantum squids are on the run, 
we've got new tech to study, and the galaxy's a little bit safer. All because one human decided to go full WWE on some uppity calamari. Despite herself, Yulna let out a chittering laugh. When you put it that way, it does sound rather... Absurd. Welcome to the human experience, Furball Sarah grinned. Absurdity is our bread and butter, or should I say, our peanut butter and jelly. Yulna's nose wrinkled in confusion. I don't understand that reference. Ah, never mind, Sarah waved a hand. The point is, we thrive on the ridiculous. It's how we cope, it's how we innovate, and apparently it's how we save the galaxy. I'm beginning to see that Yulna nodded slowly. But surely you must understand the concerns of the other species, your rapid advancement, your willingness to use force. Sarah held up a hand. Let me stop you right there. You want to know the real reason the other species are freaking out? It's not because we're advancing too quickly or because we're too violent. It's because we're unpredictable. Yulna's ears perked up with interest. Go on. Think about it. Sarah leaned forward, her eyes intense. The Dominion, the Hunters, even these new quantum squids, they all operate on predictable patterns. They've been doing the same dance for millennia. And then here we come, the cosmic equivalent of a toddler with a loaded gun, doing backflips through their carefully ordered galaxy. That's... A concerning analogy, Yulna said, her whiskers twitching nervously. Sarah laughed. Oh, it absolutely should be. We're terrifying. One minute we're writing poetry and curing diseases. The next we're strapping ourselves to explosives just to see if we can reach the moon. We're chaos incarnate, baby. And this is... A good thing Yulna asked skeptically. You're damn right it is, Sarah nodded emphatically. Because you know who else is unpredictable. The universe itself. All those neat little patterns and protocols the Dominions built up over the millennia. They don't mean shit when a gamma ray burst decides to sterilize half a sector. Or when some previously unknown species pops out of a wormhole looking for slaves. Yulna's ears flattened as she considered this. I hadn't thought of it that way before. Of course you hadn't, Sarah said, her tone softening slightly. You've never had to. But for us, adapting to the unexpected is our whole shtick. Hell, half of human scientific advancement comes from some idiot going, I wonder what happens if I do this, and somehow not dying in the process. That sounds incredibly dangerous, Yulna said, her tone a mixture of horror and fascination. Sarah's grin widened. Oh, it absolutely is. But you know what? It works. We've gone from flinging rocks at each other to flinging ourselves between the stars in the blink of an eye, cosmically speaking. And we did it all while living on a planet that's actively trying to kill us every single day. Yulna was quiet for a moment, her ears twitching as she processed this. I'm beginning to understand why the hunters found Earth so. Challenging. Sarah barked out a laugh. Challenging. Honey, we were their worst nightmare. Imagine you're a big bad hunter, used to swooping in and snatching up helpless prey. And then you land on Earth thinking it's going to be business as usual only to find out that the prey here considers your entire species to be a minor inconvenience at best. A minor inconvenience Yolna's whiskers bristled in disbelief. The hunters have terrorized the galaxy for centuries. Yeah, well, we've been terrorized by our own planet for millennia, Sarah retorted. You think some overgrown space lobsters are scary? Please, we've got Australian wildlife that makes the hunters look like a petting zoo. Yolna's eyes widened. Surely you're exaggerating. Am I though Sarah grinned? Look it up sometime. We've got spiders that can kill you with a single bite, snakes that can swallow a man whole, and don't even get me started on the platypus. The platypus Yulna asked hesitantly. Oh boy, are you in for a treat? Sarah chuckled. Imagine God got drunk one night and decided to play Mr. Potato Head with animal parts. That's a platypus. And the kicker. It's venomous. Because of course it is. Yulna's ears flattened against her skull. Your planet sounds... terrifying. It is Sarah agreed cheerfully. And that's just the stuff on land. Don't even get me started on the oceans. We've got fish down there that look like they swam straight out of a nightmare factory. And yet, you seem almost proud of this Yulna observed, her head tilted in curiosity. Sarah's expression softened slightly. Damn right we're proud because for all its dangers, Earth is home. It's beautiful and terrifying and endlessly fascinating, 
and it's made us who we are a species that doesn't know when to quit, that laughs in the face of danger, and that somehow manages to not just survive, but thrive in conditions that would make most species curl up and die. Yulna was quiet for a moment, considering this. I think I'm beginning to understand why humans are so resilient. Resilient is one word for it, Sarah grinned. Batshit crazy is another. But hey, it works for us. Just then, Sarah's comm unit beeped again. She glanced at it and let out a low whistle. Well, would you look at that? Seems like our boy Dwayne isn't the only one capitalizing on this quantum squid business. Oh, Yolna leaned forward, curious despite herself. Sarah's grin widened as she read the message. Looks like some bright spark back on Earth has started a petition to officially classify calamari as a victory meal for the human race. It's already got millions of signatures. Yolna's whiskers twitched in confusion. I don't understand. What does food have to do with this? Sarah threw her head back and laughed. Oh, honey, you've got so much to learn about humans. We're not just going to beat these quantum squids, we're going to eat them too. Metaphorically speaking, of course, mostly. Mostly, Yolna asked, her tone wary. Sarah winked. Let's just say I wouldn't be surprised if authentic quantum calamari starts showing up on menus across human space in the near future. We're nothing if not opportunistic. Yulna's ears flattened in what Sarah had learned was an expression of exasperation. You humans are. Impossible to predict. Now you're getting it, Sarah beamed. And that, my furry friend, is our secret weapon. The hunters couldn't predict us. The Dominion can't predict us. Hell, half the time we can't even predict ourselves. And in a galaxy full of ancient civilizations set in their ways that makes us dangerous in all the best ways. Yulna sighed, but there was a hint of amusement in her eyes. I suppose I should be grateful that humanity seems to be on our side then. Damn straight Sarah nodded. Just remember next time some cosmic horror decides to rear its ugly head, you've got an entire planet of chaos monkeys ready and willing to punch it right in its tentacles, or whatever it has. A comforting thought Yulna said dryly. I think. Sarah stood up, stretching. Well, this has been fun, but I've got a carrier group to coordinate. Can't let the squids think we've gone soft just because we turned them into a meme. Yolna rose as well, smoothing down her fur. Of course. I should report back to the council. They'll be. Interested to hear about our discussion. Oh, I bet they will, Sarah grinned. Just remember to tell them Earth isn't a threat. We're an asset. A batshit crazy, unpredictable, occasionally terrifying asset, but an asset nonetheless. As Yulna turned to leave, Sarah called out one last time. Oh, and Yulna, if you ever feel like experiencing a real death world vacation, give me a call. I know a great little spot in Australia that'll make you appreciate your fuzzy hide like never before. Yulna's ears flattened as she hurried out of the room, leaving Sarah chuckling to herself. As the door closed behind the Gowian ambassador, Sarah's comm unit beeped once more. She glanced at it, and her eyes widened. Well, I'll be damned, she muttered, a slow grin spreading across her face. Looks like The Rock isn't the only one getting a movie deal. Squids and giggles the Sarah Martinez story. Oh, this is going to be fun. With a spring in her step and a gleam in her eye, Captain Sarah Giggles Martinez headed off to her next briefing, already composing her acceptance speech for the inevitable action figure line in her head. After all, in a galaxy full of terrors, sometimes the best defense was a good laugh and a healthy dose of human insanity. The universe, it seemed, had better brace itself. The Death Worlders weren't just here to stay, they were here to rewrite the rules of the game. And they were going to have one hell of a good time doing it. <laughs>